Firstly, we have the Colossal Man. And as many of you may know, the Colossal Man is a very small percentage of the population. There's very few people in the world that can be like the Colossal Man because they're working all the all the time. The Colossal Man's success propels himself to an elevated state inside the dominance hierarchy. And with that, he gets the best things that life has to offer. He's incredibly attractive to women, and other men look up to him. Some of you may think you'd want to be a Colossal Man. Well, maybe not. Think about the responsibilities and sacrifices that that position entails. You might think, yeah, I'd like to be worshipped by everyone. Ha <laughs> ha! Think again! When people put you on a pedestal, it is very easy to screw it up. There are other men watching and waiting for you to make a mistake so they can claim your spot. It is very stressful to be a colossal man, and most men don't have the temperament to exude that lifestyle. After that, we have the familiar man. The familiar man is your everyday guy. Not as high on the dominance hierarchy as the colossal man but has enough status to settle into society in a way that offers himself security. He's exalted enough to be respected, but not too exalted where other men are actively trying to bring him down and negate his achievements. Oh, that's the button in my garage. Not the next slide. Sorry about that. <clears throat> next, there is the subprimal man. The subprimal man is at the very bottom of the dominance hierarchy. In early cognitive development, he did not learn to socialize with those around him properly. This is a very bad thing. I'm not kidding. You don't want to be a subprimal man. Subprimal men are either incredibly agreeable or incredibly disagreeable. If he's agreeable, then he was most likely bullied in childhood and always put his tail between his legs and let other people treat him like garbage. He learned not only that other people didn't respect him, but also learned to not respect himself. The agreeable subprimal man is like, like this. Like, like this. Hi, I'm Mr. Subprimal Man. Notice how I'm not making eye contact and purposely making myself smaller. That's the agreeable subprimal man. Now, the disagreeable subprimal man is another animal entirely. When he was younger, he would be the child that would steal toys from other children and be outright mean and never learn to get along. The parents of this child, if he, any, if he even had any, never taught him how to function in society. If you're a disagreeable subprimal child, it's like, I'm the only thing that's important. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Maybe if he had parents that taught him simple things like cleaning his room or not allowing him to do whatever the hell he wants. He needs a parent to say something like, No, that's not okay what you're doing. If you keep doing that, there's going to be consequences. And the parent has to mean it and follow through. Lastly, we have the subservient woman, which is mostly considered, Yes, yes you. Excuse me, Professor, but it seems like you're shifting the argument of your lecture into a framework which embodies anti-multiculturalism, and that is not okay. What do you mean? So, uh, your speech is like, I feel as though I've uh, personally been, um, yes, yeah, sort of uh, attacked through your rhetoric that is, um, yeah, so full of what now uh, residing of hate speech against legislate the, the uh, minorities. You're, you're pr promoting oppression against that of minorities and the BLT community. That's not what I'm doing at all. And if you think that, then you haven't been paying attention this entire time. You're shifting the argument of your lecture into a framework which embodies anti-multiculturalism. I don't know why you're doing this. Are you or are you not shifting the argument of your lecture into a framework which embodies anti-multiculturalism? It's puzzling why you keep repeating the same nonsensical phrase. So you admit that you are shifting the argument of your lecture into a framework which embodies anti-multiculturalism. It's important to be able to articulate your words in a way that your listener understands. Do you endorse hate to the BLT community? What? No. So then do you denounce everything that you said? Look, I'm very fond of sandwiches, 
I just happen to prefer sandwiches that don't have the composition of bacon, lettuce, and tomato all at once. Be that as it may, that by no means make me a hater of such food. Even if I did, it wouldn't have any correlation to my lecture on the walk of man through the dominance hierarchy. This is all wrong. I shouldn't even be here in this classroom. You preach about lobsters and making the bed. How dare you? No! I'm so sorry for my world! <laughs> You're still shifting the argument of your lecture into a framework which embodies anti-multicultural- And you have a knife. Oh my gosh, are you threatening me with that knife? Are you threatening me with that knife? Well, that depends what you mean by threaten. Obviously, I have the knife, which makes you feel uncomfortable. But does that mean I intend to use it against you, or am I simply aware of the fact that you may perceive me to be capable of using it under a scenario where I would deem it necessary? Make no mistake, there is always a line. A line that, if crossed, serious damage could be implemented. But where that line is drawn is unknown to you, and maybe even to myself on a deeper subconscious level. Here is an avocado, a simple food with omega-3 fatty acids, a perfect snack for the colossal man in a time of disquietude.